what if we could shoot each other from like planet to planet using like a hyperloop? What if there is a If we could travel really fast. It's too bad there's not like a new hyperloop design out there or like a new hyperloop concept, you know, that mm-hmm. would utilize like fast technology or anything. I mean, that will never happen, right? Well, so, you know, Virgin likes to, um, you know, get on these new transportation trains. They had, they, they've got their airline. They've got their Virgin Galactic, which only gets into suborbital, so it's not really galactic. But, uh, mm. but uh, yeah, they're, they're also looking at Hyperloop. Mm, this is actually interesting to me because Hyperloop has always just kind of been this thing that people are kind of testing, and, and, and it still is not a proven technology. But, yeah, Virgin Hyperloop announced a certification center for an 800-acre site in West Virginia. And there's renderings of it here. Um Reserve yours today. Some, yeah. Pull up some bigger pictures of it. I love um, that. That looks like a really sweet there. hydrogen semi truck. Man, I wonder where they got that design. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, but this is actually pretty, pretty interesting. Um, this is just sort of like, I guess there's a, you can see the tunnel right there in the top, pressurized cargo and whatnot. Um, but yeah, yes, this please. is a, this is kind of a big deal. That, so they, they're setting this up in, in uh, West Virginia. Uh, they're calling it the HCC, the Hyperloop Certification Center. And um, yeah, let's see, it's an 800, 800, 800 acre complex will welcome, include a welcome center, an all important six mile certification track, a pod final assembly f- facility, a project development test center, and training center for operation safety and maintenance. Mm. Um, so they go into like what this is going to be and how they raise the money and all that kind of stuff. But then you go down here. And this is the part that kind of blew me away because they're actually already thinking about like national networks here. Hmm. Um, so it's a $500 million center and it's expected to kick off next year. It's going to have thousands of jobs and stuff like that. Uh, the company is angling to launch commercial operations five years after that in 2030. Okay. So the, the, the center will be set up in 2025 and they want to actually launch stuff in 2030. So it says once up and zipping at 600 miles per hour or faster, hmm. um, says uh has the potential to move people and cargo and levitating pods from pittsburgh to chicago in under 40 minutes new york city to washington dc in 30 minutes and uh, there would be a columbus ohio linked to pittsburgh chicago route um let's see what the other routes they have here kansas city st louis columbia 30 minutes raleigh and durham via chapel hill nine minutes dallas and laredo with stops at fort worth austin and san antonio 54 minutes the whole mm-hmm. way. That's insane. Why would you need uh, a stop in Carolina? Dallas and Fort Worth? I feel like. Well, that traffic, doesn't... that can be an hour and a half. It can be. Yeah, you're right. Oh, okay. I guess I've in never. In fact, my, my wife's favorite restaurant is in Fort Worth. And uh, the other day, she it was like four o'clock. And I'm like, where do you want to have dinner? And she was like, I really feel like that. And I'm going, dude. <laughs> <laughs> it, it would we would have had to leave by now. Yeah. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, exactly. Should have thought of this hours ago. I should have thought of this yesterday so we can camp out. So, I mean, this is, I mean, these are big plans. And, oh, I love this. It's the site of a former coal mine. (laughs) Yeah, I was going to say West Virginia, man. This is a, that's great. That is great. I love this. Yeah. I I was really disappointed when, when Elon kind of changed what was originally the whole Hyperloop thing and really just started going into just the boring company and making Mm -hmm. boring tunnels, (laughs) you know, Boring old tunnels. And uh, I've just always thought the Hyperloop seems like relatively low-hanging fruit as far as technology goes. Like, way easier to do this than a full-flow stage combustion cycle rapidly reusable starship, you know? Like, this is easy, and I feel like it could be pretty revolutionary, too, so. Well, uh, let let me question that because I did a video on this a while ago, but I don't really understand the the bit of Hyperloop that is actually innovative. Um, Because a pneumatic uh, train is Mm -hmm. how the actual very first trains ever in subways were created. Uh, It was like in the 1800s in New York. The first one was going to be a pneumatic train, which is basically what this is by creating a pure vacuum or whatever. It'll suck it through, right? Then the other part is the maglev part, right? So the idea Mm -hmm. where it like would levitate on a track and it wouldn't touch the track, so the friction would so so you remove all the air, mm-hmm. and then and then you remove like wheels touching a thing, so there would be 
basically no friction whatsoever. And if you're in a pure vacuum there, you should be able to go kind of insanely fast, right? That, that's right. the idea, right? Right. right. Um, yeah. It even says passive mag mag magnetic levitation based capsule transport. Right. Yeah, that is actually why I left that up because that did confuse me. But, I, I didn't. I didn't think the hyperloop was supposed to be maglev. No, that that was the original idea. But, yeah, and then, the original. And then hyperloop is has it? done okay. these like things where they the actual one in, at SpaceX in in LA, but that's not like this technology. That's like a different kind of a thing, right? They're doing like little go karts basically, or like train track things. Mm -hmm. But what? but none of this is actually really new, right? Like we have maglev trains, we have pneumatic systems, albeit I don't know if there's any trains that actually run on that. Um, it's just the combination of those things and doing it right, rightly, will mm -hmm. make it better. <laughs> well, and let me let me be clear too. There, the the passive magnetic levitation would be where it's literally it's not propel it's not propelled by by the magnets and the the right. like a maglev train literally has alternating magnets that basically continually pull the train along mm -hmm. yeah, a yeah. passive would we were just is just floating it just so you remove it just the, keeps it from touching the thing yes. and then i if i recall don't they just them, like yeah. don't they just like it, let a little air in or something and then because it's a vacuum it just like you know it's like a cannon basically there's a few different yeah there's a few different ways that have been proposed and some of them are even like you do just remove the air down to like one percent and you just let the vehicle use a compressor basically like compress the air in front just, of it, it to create a pressure differential like, yeah there's right, a whole it, bunch of different propulsion methods involved but yeah. i don't get why well, he, like, he the compared it to oh, an air hockey table in the beginning exactly like i i i don't get why we're not just doing a regular maglev like we were like what we're used to with trains and just stick it in a tunnel and suck the air out like to me that seems like well a no brainer yeah, yeah, and that's kind of what I'm saying. Like, it doesn't yeah. really. This isn't some like. This isn't, uh, you know, uh, SST. Uh, this isn't fully reusable. This isn't like some mind blowing <laughs> thing that you're like, oh my god. Like, this seems like kind of a natural step, I guess. Right. Yeah. I think scaling it up where you have a 200 kilometer long vacuum tunnel is just kind of where it's like, oh yeah, that's hard. And and then safety becomes a yeah. concern, right? Because if that thing yeah. got hit by a, a yeah. truck. What happens to the rest of it? Doesn't the whole thing just freaking explode when it when it does that? If it's a vacuum, probably. Yeah, like it's not. <laughs> the amount of pressure is insane. Yeah. So it seems like it would have to be segmented somehow, and in, in like. Yep. In like. Airlock. As the train passes I, passes in front, like as it as as it approaches, it like all these airlocks open up to let it let it go through, so that not the entire thing is yep. is vacuum sealed or yep. whatever. Yeah, there there'll have to be lots I've, I've of stuff. My, I have had my reservations about Hyperloop and its actual uh, use, usefulness, whether it's actually possible. Yeah, I, I love the idea. I love I love ground-based transportation at super high speeds. Uh, I think it's fantastic. And especially mm -hmm. something like this would be very carbon friendly uh, if they do mm -hmm. it right. Right. So, make that point. Yeah. Yeah. So, thing. so there's so many benefits. I really love the idea. I just, I'm still a little like, I need to see this. I think, yeah. Um, cause that company is called Hyperloop One, right? There's an actual, and, and I think Virgin bought them or something like that. Or, yeah, there was Hyperloop One and they're working with DevLoop. It says DevLoop, mm. a smaller existing Virgin Hyperloop test site, uh, in the Nevada desert. But hopefully yeah. it's not like, you know, like we were saying, hopefully it's not this thing that has potential for catastrophe, right? I mean, because yeah. when you're talking about pressure differentials and stuff like that. But Hey guys, thanks so much for watching this clip from our show. If that's just not enough for you and you want to watch the full episode, you can go to olfpod.com slash YT. And if you want more from us, you can consider becoming a Patreon member. You'll get early access to episodes. You can join our awesome community. You can actually watch us record live and get your name in the credits by going to olfpod.com slash Patreon. So thanks, everyone, for watching. Check back every Friday for new clips here and new episodes on the main channel. Thanks, everybody.